Hey guys, welcome to LA Love Creative. And today we're talking about my first impressions of the Canon EOS R5. If you haven't, make sure you hit the bell so you can stay notified when we post new videos. Cue the intro. Now recently I had a chance to test out the Canon EOS R5. Now I primarily shoot Sony when it comes to photography, hybrid situations, and I shoot Canon or other types of cinema cameras when I am doing something more cinematic, commercial work, stuff like that. And I've been thinking lately of trying to invest into a cinema camera that I could use on projects. And I wanna be kind of brand loyal with that. That way I can use my lenses on everything across the board. However, there is a lot of issues I find with the Canon EOS R5 that I will break down in this video as a Sony hybrid shooter, my initial thoughts. Now, a lot of people are comparing the Sony versus Canon. And right now I'll be honest that the Canon and the Sony debate really doesn't make sense as the Canon EOS R5 and the Sony don't have really similar offerings. Um, the Canon EOS R5 right now shoots 45 megapixels. It shoots 4K 120, it shoots 4K 60, 4K 10-bit recording. Um, you're talking about a 8K resolution. That camera really doesn't have a equivalent when it comes to the Sony side, so it's hard to really compare those cameras. Now the Canon, Canon, now the Canon EOS R5 versus the A7S 3 would be a better comparison. However, the Canon EOS R5 has 45 megapixels as far as photography, and the Sony A7S 3 only has 12, 12, and the Sony <laughs> 12, and the Sony A7S 3 only has 12 megapixels. So that's not even a comparison. Now recently I had a fashion shoot that I was working on and I thought this would be a great time to just test out the dynamic range, the image quality, the overheating issue, um, and just overall capacity when it comes to stills and video. I'm looking right now for a camera that can do all the things. I needed to do all the things. Um, and what I mean by that is I don't wanna carry around two bodies. If I'm going to carry around two bodies that do different things, like one body for photos, one body for video, then I'm just gonna have a cinema camera and a photography camera. When I was shooting with the Canon EOS R5, my first thoughts were, wow, the ergonomics, the, the body, the design, the functionality of this camera are amazing. And maybe it's because I've shot with a lot of different Canon cameras in the past, but it just felt a little more natural than when using the Sony, even though I've been shooting Sony for a while now as well. When I was shooting with this camera, I used a 24 to 70 2.8, um, and I used a EOS R to EF adapter that had ND filters, which I feel like every camera should be like, every camera company should figure out a way to make something similar to this. Another great thing I loved about the Canon EOS R5 was even though it overheats, I like the fact that it kind of tells you, it has a timer on the screen that gives you a heads up like, hey, you about to be f***ed. When it comes to photography, do you need 45 megapixels? No, but do you need a lot of things that you want? Probably no, but I want it now that I have it. 45 megapixels to me is just overkill, but at the same time, it's like the good overkill. So when you shoot in fashion work with this camera, you're going to be just in love with what you're seeing on the LCD. 45 megapixels is not needed unless you're blowing up something really big or you wanna crop or you wanna do something like that. And shooting 45 megapixels is going to also fill up your card space and your hard drive space, so you need to be aware of that as well. There's a dog over here napping, so if you hear something, that's what's happening. I think the Canon EOS R5, if you are looking specifically just for a photography camera, is probably the best bet you have as far as price. I think the camera is a better photography camera than the 1DX Mark III that just recently came out um, and it's cheaper. Um, and at the same time, I think it's better than pretty much every other photography camera on the market in that mirrorless hybrid setup.
another thing that I really liked about the photography features on this camera is the autofocus is really snappy. The eye autofocus works really well in video and in photography modes. And I found myself really, really just relying on that. The Sony a7 III has amazing um, autofocus in video and in photography, but I would say that the Canon is just a little easier to use. Um, I think they're both now getting to a point where they're both just on par. Um, but the Canon to me just is a little bit easier to use with the touch screen and it's just easier to use. One of the biggest things I love about this camera is you can shoot 4K, 120, um, 10 bit. I love the fact that the Canon EOS R has 10 bit recording, 10 bit 422 recordings. That to me is just, that alone would make this camera a perfect B camera. However, with the overheating issues, I don't think it can be. However, I just wish Canon would take that technology and take away the overheating. And we would have right now a perfect B or C camera for your Canon setup. And I love the fact that the codex in this camera, we have 4K, 60, 10 bit. We got um, 120, 4K, 10 bit. We got tw you know 24P, 4K, 10 bit. The 8K RAW is really, really hard to deal with for anybody who has an average or you know fat, even a professional computer, unless you have like a 60K iMac, um, then cool story, bro. The dynamic range. Nobody, a lot of fanboys on the internet, one thing I just hate about fanboys is I love Sony, I love Canon, I like Fuji. I like, um, I like Black Magic. I like all these brands, but if you have something that I think sucks, I'm gonna tell you it sucks. This is how you find out a fanboy is going to basically be biased. They have a lot of Canon glass. They're just going to kiss Canon's ass. The Canon EOS R5's dynamic range was a letdown. The Canon EOS R5 suffers when it comes to dynamic range. Um, Gerald Undone actually broke this down. It basically has 11 stops at usable dynamic range. That to me is kind of a letdown as most hybrid cameras now, right now, especially the a7S3 is beating it when it comes to dynamic range. That might not be a big issue for other people, but me, I'm looking for a perfect B camera for a cinema camera. And it just was a little bit annoying that the dynamic range on the Canon EOS R5 was not as good as other hybrid cameras on the market. overheating in this camera. So I primarily shoot with Sony. I shoot with Canon on higher end stuff. I need cameras that I can rely on. Now there are people that say the Sony cameras overheat. I've never had a problem with the Sony a7 III overheating, a7R3, basically any of the, the newer Sony cameras. The Canon EOS R5, the overheating issue on this camera makes it completely unusable for most video shooters. If you're a hybrid shooter and you wanna do video slash you know, photos, this camera as it stands today is unusable. Yes, you can do externally. That's not the whole point of, that's not the point of a camera like this. At that point, you're putting a monitor, it's like, we'll get a cinema camera at that point. Um, yes, you can do some weird scotch tape hack on it. You can, you. I, you can do all types of stuff to try to make this work. I was shooting some photography, um, shooting pictures, and then I eventually wanted to switch over to just do 4K HQ. It basically told me I had two minutes of recording on this camera. So after about 30 minutes of shooting just photos, I had two minutes of recording actual 4K HQ. And the 4K that's not HQ on this camera is not that good. So you wanna shoot the 4K HQ. 3,800 just for the camera about $300 for taxes, where I'm from, um, about $400 for a memory card, and now you're at about like around 4,500, 4,600, and you haven't even got a lens, and you're telling me that this camera is going to overheat every time you try to do video. It's just not a usable camera for that. Now, there are people out there that are saying, hey, I, I don't get overheating. It never overheats for you. That's cool. But when I use the camera myself, 
it overheated and I wasn't even pushing it even remotely close to what I normally do. Another big thing when it comes to overheating is the cool down time. You basically can't cool down the camera. It just has to wait about an hour before you can actually shoot these modes again. So basically when it comes to overheating, this really cripples this camera as a hybrid camera. Now, if you're just a photographer who does video occasionally, by all means, I think this is a cool camera for you. Without all that being said, the camera itself has really, really good image when it comes to video and when it comes to photography. Um, if they could figure out a way to solve the overheating issues and you know, possibly give us more record times when it comes to the overheating, I would say this is a perfect camera for a B camera, for a cinema camera, for a photographer, for a hybrid shooter. From a professional standpoint, I would never have a camera that I can't rely on for any shoot other than just maybe YouTube. Now that's all I have to say about the Canon EOS R5 first impressions. Um, if you have any questions about the Canon EOS R5 or photography in general, hit me up in the comments below and I will see you later. Peace.